Welcome to Learning Anatomy with Dr. Bakari. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the first anatomy of the vagina. Using this image by the side, this is where we have the vagina canal here, yeah, tarot in blue. The vagina canal is an inferior extension from the cervix. And we know that the cervix is the inferior narrow region of the uterus. This is where we have the uterus here, yeah, tarot in green. And at this inferior region here yeah, is where we have the cervix. From the cervix here yeah, downwards is where we then have the vagina canal. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the vagina and also highlighting some features that you should know as students of anatomy. The vagina canal is a fibromuscular structure that is elastic in nature. And this is as a result of the deposit of elastic fibers in its histological structure. We will be highlighting this when we get to the histology of the vagina canal. So please do watch out for this. Vagina canal is seen to link the reproductive tract to the external environment. If we try to look at this image by the side, this is where we have the vagina canal here, heard at this point. We see that this is an inferior extension from the uterus, specifically at the inferior narrow region of the uterus, which is the cervix. So you see it extending from this region, which is the external host of the cervix. The external host of the cervix is the inferior limit of the endocervical canal. We know that the cervix is seen to have a canal or a lumen along it. And at this external region here is where we have the external host of the cervix. And this vagina canal is seen to then extend from this region to where we have the vagina orifice. And this is where we have the vagina orifice here held at this inferior region. So you see the vagina canal extending superiorly from the external host of the cervix to the vagina orifice here at this haptar region. The vagina canal, we say, links the reproductive system with the external environment. During sexual intercourse, it is through the vagina canal that the penis is inserted, and it is through this region that the release of the ejaculate reaches the female reproductive tract, specifically in the hampula region of the uterine tube where fertilization will occur. Also, during labor, the head of the baby also needs to run through this vagina canal before it is finally released to the outside. So you see that the vagina canal is like the terminal structure that is seen to link the reproductive tract with the external environment. And it is through this region that structures would pass through before they can assess the female reproductive system. So let's go through the dimension of the vagina canal. Anteriorly, the vagina canal is seen to be about eight centimeters in length. Posteriorly, it is seen to extend longer, and this is about 10 centimeters in length. So if you compare the anterior and the posterior wall of the vagina, you see that it is longer in the posterior wall than in the anterior wall. Take a look at the width. The width of the vagina canal is about five centimeters. What if you go more superiorly, it tends to expand. And the expansion that is created around this whole parigion is because of the curvature that is created by the vagina canal. And this curvature is to create an alignment with the uterus that is located in an activated position. If we go back to our lecture on the uterus, in that lecture, we describe the positions of the uterus. And we say that the uterus is placed antivertedly over the vagina canal. And this is created in an angle of 90 degrees. So if you try to take a longitudinal alignment along the vertical axis of the vagina canal, you see that the uterus is located in an antiverted position over it. So this curvature that is created at this upper region of the vagina canal is what is seen to allow for its expansion at this upper region. And this is created at an angle of 90 degrees. If you look at this upper image, this is where we have the uterus here, higher than purple. If you look at the position of the uterus along the vagina canal, you see that it is placed in an antiverted position. And this is where it is creating an angle of 90 degrees in respect to the longitudinal axis of the vagina canal. And this expansion created at this upper region is contributed more by the posterior wall. So it is the posterior wall that contributes more to the expansion at this region. And that is why it is seen to be longer than the anterior wall. So you see that the width of the vagina canal, it goes up 
tends to be wider. So it tends to broaden at the subparagion, region so as to be able to create the avenue for the expansion that is needed for the antiverted position of the uterus. And this antiverted position of the uterus is to help prevent the prolapse of the uterus because the angulature created at this region is helping to prevent that action. If the uterus is located directly, just above the vertical axis of the vagina canal, there is possibility that the uterus can look downwards into the canal of the vagina. And in preventing this, it is seen to be angulated over it in an activated position. So this will help to prevent prolapse of the uterus. It is also important for us to highlight that the anterior and the posterior wall of the vagina canal are seen to connect. We try to create this alignment at the top region. Let's say this is the anterior wall and this is the posterior wall. You see that the anterior and the posterior wall are in contact with each other. And this is where they create a transverse slit around this region. If you go back to our lecture on the uterus, in the uterus, we say that the endometrial lining of the uterus prevents adhesion of the wall of the uterus. This is where it is helping to keep the uterus open and also keep the alignment of the orientation of the uterus. But in the vagina canal, it is a different scenario. The actual and the posterior wall of the vagina canal seem to be in contact with each other. And this is in a way to prevent structures from having easy free flow into the cavity or the space of the vagina in order to prevent them from ascending up into the reproductive tract. So let's try and go into the different regions and walls of the vagina canal. Using this lower image, this is where we have the vagina here, arrowed in yellow, and using this up high image here, this is where we have the vagina canal also arrowed here in yellow. So let's go to the walls. We have the anterior wall. We have described the anterior wall in our previous slide, say that the anterior wall is shorter, and this is what is highlighted here in dotted gray. What the posterior wall behind is what is highlighted here in dotted purple, and this is seen to be longer when compared to the anterior. And we've tried to justify the reason behind it. We say that at this upper head, there is an angulature created. And in order to fit into this angulature, in keeping the uterus in an activated position, we have a form of expansion as the vaginal canal goes upward. We say that the posterior wall is seen to contribute more to the expansion at this upper region. And that is why it is seen to be longer than the anterior wall. Why the anterior wall is contributing less to the expansion created at this upper region. And this is why the anterior wall is seen to be shorter. So this is what is created here around this region. So going to the upper region, the upper region of the vaginal canal is also seen to present some form of distinct features. And this is as a result of the fact that the cervix, which is the inferior narrow region of the uterus, is seen to extend into the vaginal canal. So if you look at this upper image, this is where we have the cervix here, carried in black, and you see that part of the cervix is seen to extend into the vaginal canal. We've also tried to describe this in detail in our lecture on the cervix. And this region of the cervix that is seen to extend into the vagina canal is referred to as the ecto cervix or the exo cervix. This is what is arrowed here in this image. And because of this presentation, the upper region of the vagina canal is seen to present some form of expansion. So we have distinct expansions at this upper region, and this expansion are so tagged different names based on the regions where they are located. And these expansions are referred to as the phonics. So we have the anterior phonics, just as the name implies, is the expansion that is created at the upper region of the vagina canal that is seen in the anterior part. So if you try to use this upper image, this is where we have the anterior phonics here, carried in pink, you see that it's located in the anterior region or anterior wall of the vagina canal. Why if you go more behind, you have the posterior phonics. And this is what is harrowed here in blue. The posterior phonics, just as also the name implies, is located at the posterior region. And it is a phonic because it is the expansion that is created around that region as a result of part of the cervix extending into the vagina canal. The posterior phonix is larger than the anterior phonix, and semen can get lodged into this space during ejaculation. Then if you go more laterally on both lateral sides, we have two phonics. We have the right and the left lateral phonics. In this upper image, because this is a sagittal view, 
we will not be able to show the lateral fornix. But going to this lower image, this is where we have the right lateral fornix, and this is where we have the left lateral fornix. So you see that on the lateral region, we also have expansions created around this region. And this also refers to the right and the left lateral fornix. So you see that as a result of a part or a region of the cervix, Extending into the upper region of the vagina canal, we have this fornix excreted. It is important for us to note that internal wall of the vagina canal is thrown into both. So we have brugade formed within the mucosa wall of the vagina canal. If you try to use this lower image, you would be able to see the infoldings that occur within the wall of the vagina canal at the internal region. And this is able to allow for it to further expand. When we get to the histology of the vagina, we would be able to highlight and emphasize the reason behind these projections. So now let's drive through to the functions of the vagina. The vagina is seen to present a number of functions. I would be using this slide to illustrate that. The first function is that the heart has a receptive site for the penis. The penis does not have any other way to access the female reproductive tract except through the vaginal canal. It is only through the vagina that the penis can have access into the female reproductive system. And this is where it releases the ejaculate. And this ejaculate then travels down to the ancillary region of the uterine tube where fertilization will occur, which is the essence of the release of this ejaculate. So it has at the site that receives the penis, and this is one of the functions that I like. The second function is that it enhances sexual pleasure. So there is a specific region around the wall of the vagina that is referred to as the G-spot. This G-spot is highly sensitive, and during sexual intercourse, intense touch will enhance sexual gratitude. The third function is that the heart has a birth canal. During vaginal birth, it's through the vagina that the head of the baby will finally pass through before it can be released to the external environment. Then finally, it allows flow for menstrual blood. During the process of menstruation, when the endometrium lining of the uterus is shed, this bloody discharge needs to also run through the vaginal canal before it is finally released to the outside. So you see that we try to highlight different functions of the vagina. You can please add to this list in our comment section. So we try for that to look at the relations of the vagina canal. Using this upper image, this is where we have the vagina canal here, arrowed in pink. So let's look at the structures that are related to this structure. Anteriorly, the structure that you have at the front is the urinary bladder. And this urinary bladder is seen at the upper region. So this is where we have the urinary bladder here, harrowed in yellow. You can see that it is seen as the anterior region of the vagina canal. And if you go more inferiorly, you have urethra, and this is the urethra. So at the inferior region here, you have urethra. So these two structures are located anteriorly to the vagina. So if you go posteriorly behind, if you try to divide the vagina into three thirds, you see that the superior third is seen to be bounded posteriorly by the rectal uterine pouch or the pouch of the glass. And this is what is harrowed here at this point. The rectal uterine pouch is a fold of peritoneum that is seen to extend from the posterior region of the uterus to the anterior surface of the rectum. This is where we have the uterus here in the anterior part, and behind it here we have the rectum. So you have a pouch created around this region. So the upper one third of the vagina canal is related posteriorly to this pouch. Then if you go to the middle third of the vagina canal, posteriorly it is related to the ampulla of the rectum. And this is where we have ampulla of the rectum here, carried at this point. But if you go more inferiorly, for the inferior one third is related to the anal canal. We know that the structure that we have inferior to the rectum is the anal canal. It is also related at its inferior one third to the perineal body. So these two structures are related posteriorly to the vagina canal around the inferior water. Then if you go laterally, the structure that you would see is the erectus and also the levator enimus. We try to use this lower image. On this lateral side, you have erectus, you have one on the right, and you have the other one on the left. We know that anteriorly to the uterus, the structure that we have there is the urinary bladder. So you should expect that at its lateral region, the vagina canal will be related to the two erectors and will also be having the levator ani muscle. So this is where we have the levator ani muscle here also highlighted in blue on both sides. Also forming the lateral relations of the vagina canal. 
So these are the structures that are related to the vaginal canal and we try to place them according to our diaposition. Then finally, the inferior opening of the vaginal canal is the vaginal orifice. It is closed by the hymen. So this is where we have the hymen here highlighted in red that is seen to cover up the entrance of the vagina in the external region. And this vary a lot. It can be total closure or partial closure. The hymen can be used to gauge virginity because this membrane needs to be removed before penetration can occur during copulation. So when it is still intact, it can be used to stage virginity. So let's drive for that too. I like the structures that provide support for the vagina canal. We know that the vagina canal also needs some form of structural support for it to be able to maintain its alignment. So we'll be looking at the different ligaments and also muscles that provide support for the vagina canal. Using this lower image, this is where we have the uterus. And we say that the inferior narrow region of the uterus have the stabbing. If you go more inferiorly here, we have the external host. This external host is what opens up into the vagina canal. And at this region that is harrowed here in black is where we have the vagina canal. So this is the space of the vagina canal. So we're highlighting the different structures that provide support for the vagina canal. And the first one we'll be looking at is in the anterior support. And anteriorly, it is supported by the fupal cervical ligament. All we need to do, as I've always said on this channel, is for us to always break down the name. Fupal cervical ligament is a ligament that connects the cervical region and also the upper region of the vagina canal to the posterior border or wall of the pubic symphysis. So if you try to use this lower image, this is where we have the cervical ligament. We have one on this side and we have the other one on the other side. And you see it extending from the anterior lateral surface of the cervix and also the anterior lateral surface of the upper region of the vagina canal. And you see the fibers are directed to be inserted on the posterior border or wall of the pubic symphysis. So this is what is projected here in this image. And this is where you see that this ligament is providing anterior support for the vagina canal. The second ligament that we have is transverse cervical ligament or the cardinal ligament. This cardinal ligament can also be referred to as the Meckenbrot ligament. This ligament is seen to provide lateral support for the vagina canal. And it's providing lateral support because of the pattern by which it runs. So you see the transverse cervical ligament, just as the name implies, is seen to run transversely. Imagine from the lateral wall of the cervix, you also have some of it extending from the lateral region of the vagina phonics. We already established how these phonics are created. So you have the lateral wall of the cervix and also the vagina phonics. And you see that they are finally directed and be inserted on the lateral pelvic wall. And this is where they are so referred to as transverse cervical ligaments. So they run transversely along this space. And this is where they are helping to provide structural support also for the vagina canal around the lateral border. The next ligament that we have is the uterosacral ligament. The uterosacral ligament, if we break down the name, is a ligament that connects the uterus, specifically the cervix, to the base of the sacrum. This ligament is seen around the posterior region. If you look at its connection point, you see that it is in the sacrum, and the sacrum is a part of the spine that is located around the posterior region. So it is located behind and cannot be seen in this lower image. But you can imagine how it originates and also where it is finally connected to. So you see it originating from the posterior wall border of the cervix and is inserted on the sacrum. And because of this connection, it's also helping to reinforce or support the wall of the vagina canal. So it is in a way also contributing, supporting the placement or the alignment of the vagina canal. Then the next structure providing support for the vagina canal is the pubococcygeus muscle. The pubococcygeus muscle is one of the muscles that form the structural component of the levator ani. We try to use this on high image. This is where we have the pelvic floor muscle. And one of the pelvic floor muscles is the pubo procedures. From the pubo procedures, we have the emergence of strands of fibers of muscle running around the wall of the vagina. And this is where we have the emergence here highlighted in white. And this muscle is referred to as the pubo vaginalis. So we have the pubo vaginalis, which is a subset of the pubo procedures, which is one of the structural components of the levator inner muscle. 
fucking scalpy to support the wall of the vagina. So they are acting like a muscular sling around the wall of the vagina. And this is where they are also helping to support the vagina canal. Then the next muscle that we have is the bubble sponge nasus muscle. This bubble sponge nasus muscle is one of the muscles that we have in the superficial perineal pouch. We've also tried to describe this muscles in details in our lecture on the superficial perineal pouch. So check up that lecture to keep yourself updated. We tried to use this upper image by the side. This is where we have the bubble sponge nasus muscle. This muscle is a paired muscle. So as we have one on this side, have the cardan one on the other side and you see it running around the alignment of the opening to the vagina canal this is where we have the vagina orifice here harried in white this is the external opening to the vagina so you see it also supporting the vagina at the outer region so we try to highlight different ligaments and also muscles providing structural support for the vagina canal we also try to place them where they are located fun facts about the vagina canal Vagina canal does not have glands in its wall. So the wall of the vagina is not seen to have glands as what is presented in the wall of the cervix. We know that the wall of the cervix and also even uterus is seen to have glands that are responsible for secreting substance that enhances the function of the reproductive process. But in the wall of the vagina, we do not have glands. What the vagina enjoys is the secret from the cervix and also the Bertolin's gland. We would be highlighting more the Bertolin's gland in our next slide. But we should know that the vagina itself does not contain gland that secrete substances. What is seen within the vagina canal are secret produced by the endocervical glands and also the Bertolin's gland. It is also important for us to add that within the vagina space, we have an ecosystem of microorganisms. These microorganisms help to keep the vagina healthy and they are referred to as the vagina flora. And a very good example of the microbes that we have within the vagina space is the lactobacilli. This lactobacilli is a good bacteria that allows an infection-free vagina. So we have a number of these microorganisms in bacteria form, fungi, and also viruses that help keep the microenvironment of the vagina canal healthy as they have to be kept under a balanced control. So when they become imbalanced, they can cause infection. So let's quickly look at the Bertolin's gland. We said that the Bertolin's gland is one of the structures that provides secrets into the vagina canal. We say that the vagina canal itself does not have glands in its wall, but it enjoys the secrets from the cervical gland and also the Bertolin's gland. So we have Bertolin's gland that can also be referred to as the greater vestibular gland. These glands are two pear-shaped sized organs that are located on both lateral sides of the vagina. We try to use this image. This is where we have the Bertolin's gland here. I like it is yellow. We have one on this side and we have the other one on the other side. So what they secrete is released into the lumen or the cavity of the vagina. So they have dots here highlighted in black from one and also from the other. And it is through these dots that they have their secrets released into the cavity of the vagina. This Bartholin's gland that can also be referred to as the greater vestibular gland is homologous to the bulbo erectile glands in milk. To go back to our lecture on the deep perineal pouch, in that lecture, we described that the deep perineal pouch in milk is seen to contain the bulbo erectile gland. This bulbo erectile gland produces secrets that is released into the urethra, which helps to lubricate the internal wall lining of the urethra so as to allow for easy movement of ejaculate. Also in female, we have the Bertolin's gland that can also be referred to as the greater vestibular gland that also exhibits the same function. The secret from the Bertolin's gland is released into the lumen of the vagina canal to help lubricate its wall. This is also the same function that the ovoerectal gland also exhibits in male. So you see that these two structures are similar in terms of what they do. So we have these glands also contributing to lubricating the internal wall of the vagina canal because we say that the wall of the vagina canal does not contain glands that will help in secreting you to help lubricate its lumen. So this is where it enjoys the secret from the Bertolin's gland. We also have secret also from the endocervical gland that is also released into the vagina space. So let's go to the blood supply of the vagina canal. The blood supply of the vagina canal is principally from the vagina artery. The vagina artery is an emergence from the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery. 
we try to create this alignment here, this is where we have the internal iliac cartridge. We know that the internal iliac cartridge is one of the terminal branches from the common iliac cartridge. So from the internal iliac cartridge, we have further subdivision into the anterior trunk at the front and also the posterior trunk. So it is from the anterior trunk that we have the emergence of the vaginal artery. So this vaginal artery is seen to provide the source of life for the vaginal canal. The vaginal canal is also seen to enjoy contributory supply from other branches. So we have branches from the uterine artery, the middle rectal artery, and also the internal pudenda artery. So these three arteries also give supporting supply also to the wall of the vaginal canal. These three arteries are also emergence from the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery. So from the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery, we have the uterine artery. This is the uterine artery here collected in dotted gray. This uterine artery is to supply the uterus. But you see it also giving the vaginal branch here that is also highlighted in gray to supply regions also of the vagina. We also have the middle rectal artery, also an emergence from the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery. From the middle rectal artery, we also have vaginal branch also emerging to supply also the wall of the vagina. Then finally, we have the internal pudenda artery. This internal pudenda artery is also an emergence from the anterior trunk of the internal iliac artery. It also gives vaginal branches to also supply the vagina canal. Then the venous drainage is through the, the vaginal venous plexus, which will finally be collected into the uterine vein, which will go into the internal iliac vein. And this is seen at the upper region. So the lower region of the vaginal canal will be drained into the internal pudendal vein. From the internal pudendal vein, it will finally be collected into the internal iliac vein. The final collection point is still the internal iliac vein. So from the internal iliac vein, it will go to the common iliac, which will finally be then drained into the inferior vena cava. So this is how the venous drainage goes and are collected finally into the inferior vena cava. So let's go to the innervations. The innervations are also different between the upper two third and also the lower one third. So for the upper two third, innervated through the uterine vaginal plexus, and the lower one third is by the pudenda now. So let's look at the upper two third drain through the uterine vaginal plexus. Through this plexus, sympathetic supply is from the lumbar splanchnic canal, where the parasympathetic supply is from the pelvic splanchnic canal. Then for the lower one third, is innervated by the pudenda canal. So let's look at the lymphatic drainage. The lymphatic drainage of the different regions of the vaginal canal are different. So for the superior region, it is drained into the external iliac lymph node. Why the middle region of the vagina canal is drained into the internal iliac lymph node? Why we have the inferior region drained into the superficial inguinal lymph node? We know that the superficial inguinal lymph node has seen below the inguinal ligament and it is around the superficial region. And this is what collects the lymph around the inferior region of the vagina canal. So let's look at clinical anatomy. The clinical anatomy we want to highlight is vaginal yeast infection. When we describe the ecosystem of the microorganisms located within the vagina canal, we say that there has to be a balance of these microbes. When there is an imbalance, when one of the microorganisms overshoot over the others, this is going to lead to infection. So when we have an overgrowth of a particular fungi, which is the candida, this is going to lead to vaginal yeast infection. And what this presents with is white teeth discharge and also itchiness. Then we can also have vaginal prolapse. This will occur when there is weakness in the pelvic muscles. Remember when we tried to describe the supporting structures of the vagina canal, we listed a number of ligaments and also muscles. When there is weakness of this structure, this can lead to vagina prolapse. And this will lead to a displacement of the vagina out of position. And you see it protruding out of the vagina opening. Thanks for watching. Please continue to stay glib channel.